everybody. Oh wait. Okay, hi. Hello, wow, a lot of people are jumping on. All right, we're gonna give it just a few more seconds. All right, so welcome back to Cooking Together. Um, if you've been tuning in, sorry about that. Um, if you've been tuning in for the past couple weeks, welcome back. If this is your first time, welcome to Cooking Together by My Food and Family. This is a live series that's really meant to help you all through these really strange times that we're all going through and we're trying to give you the tools and techniques to conquer your kitchen. So the goal here is to show you all of those tools, tips and techniques, some fun recipes, and also have a little bit of fun. Um, my name is Sarah Young and I'm part of the Kraft Heinz culinary team. I'm really excited to be here today um, to talk to you about kitchen essentials for stress-free cooking. And I feel like this is a question I get a lot because I cook a lot. And so friends of mine are always asking me, you know, what do I need? How do I make this? Um, so I do feel like I'm always fielding questions from my friends about, you know, what they should buy. Um, I'll be honest with you, my kitchen is pretty stocked uh, because I do cook a lot. But I tend to go back to the same things over and over and over again. So I'm gonna share um, those basics with you today. So hopefully um, you will walk away from this with some great information and um, the information you need to stock your kitchen. Um, we are gonna get started with talking about um, pans. Ooh, this is heavy. Um, so to start, it's really important to have a nice selection of pans. Um, to start, a nonstick skillet is a, a great thing to have. It is so versatile. Um, you don't have to worry about your food sticking to it. It's great for eggs. You can make pancakes, a grilled cheese sandwich in here, pretty much um, anything. I use this a lot. The one thing is you do have to replace these um, every so often because sometimes the nonstick coating can start to flake off and then you don't wanna be using that anymore. Okay, so nonstick skillet. The next one is a high-sided skillet. So I really like to use this. This is um, a high-sided skillet that I use you know, for pasta dishes a lot of times. I will brown sausage in here um, and vegetables and things like that and then I'll add my pasta into the skillet and I just like the high sides because I can toss everything together and not worry about it going all over my kitchen. So that's really great. One thing I forgot to mention at the beginning, if you have any questions throughout, just pop them in the comment section and I will get to them at the end. Um, we'll do a little Q&A at the end. The last one is probably my favorite pan. It's my cast iron skillet. This is pretty near and dear to my heart. It's probably the least expensive pan in my kitchen because I got it at the hardware store and it was probably 20 to $25. It's seasoned. I use it probably five times a week. It can go on top of the stove. It can go in the oven. It's just, it's such a versatile pan. It cooks so evenly. I know that you will love it um, as much as I do. This is a 12 inch. All right, so those are our skillets. And now let's talk about pots. I really think that there's like two pots that are good to have. The first one is a nice heavy stock pot. Um, this is just good for boiling water for pasta, uh, making a soup, making a chili. It's just, it's a good versatile pot. However, you probably don't wanna be using such a big pot all the time. So this is a two quart saucepan. I call this my mac and cheese pot because I make my mac and cheese in here. It's just, it's much more um, it, friendly for you know a smaller batch of something and it's easier to clean up. So you don't really wanna be making your mac and cheese in that big pot. 
So I think with those two, you're gonna be, or with those two pots and those three pans, you'll be really set. Now let's talk about some other types of pans that would be good for you to have. Um, so if you've tuned in this week, you have seen us use the sheet pan a lot. And the sheet pan is frankly just so versatile, right? You can make savory dishes on here, you can make all your dinner at once, you can make sweet dishes. There's a nice rim and that keeps any marinades or sauces from running all over your stove. So it's really, really good. The other one, I'm just sort of moving these things over to the side as I show you them, um, is a nine by 13 inch pan or dish. I can't tell you how many times you will use this pan. You can make just about anything in it from a casserole to lasagna, to brownies, to even a cheesecake. Um, you will use this all the time. It is sort of, it is the everything pan. So make sure you have one of those. I wanted to show you a little tip. Um, in the test kitchens, we do like to line our pans with foil. So I wanted to show you a little trick for lining any of your pans. Sometimes, this is just a uh, nine by nine uh, pan. Sometimes these corners get a little tight. Um, they're just hard and you get a little tear if you're trying to um, line it with foil. So here's a little trick. Learned this many years ago when I first started in the test kitchens is you take your foil and you just wrap it around the outside of your pan. So you kind of make a mold, right? And then you just kind of take it off and you can pop it right into your pan. Oops. Perfect, so now you have a perfectly aligned pan. You don't have any tears, nothing's gonna leak out. Super awesome. Okay, I wanted to show you another idea for using your sheet pans. This is really fun. Um, these are oven s'mores, okay? So I actually have a quarter sheet pan here. It's just you know, half of the size of my half sheet pan. What I did is I lined it with foil and I put 12 graham crackers down, just the squares. I broke the graham crackers in half and I lined it. Uh, so I have 12 graham crackers. Then I took three milk chocolate bars and I broke them into fourths and I just put one piece, it's about three rectangles on each one. And then I'm just taking 12 Jet Puff marshmallows and I put them on the top. I'm gonna pop these in the oven. This is an awesome idea if you don't have a fire pit or you don't want your kids hanging out at your stove, you know, toasting their marshmallows. It's just a great way to make s'mores for a crowd. Um, I mean, when we can have crowds again, when we can all get back together, um, this is just a great idea. So I'm gonna pop these in the oven, set the timer for just a few minutes, and then um, we will uh, finish them up. All right, all right, let's move on while those are cooking. Let me set my timer. Okay, um, let's move on to knives. Okay, so I have a few knives. Again, I tend to go back to the same knives um, over and over. This is the first knife. It's about a 10 inch chef's knife. Some people have a little bit of nervousness about using a large knife, I get that. Um, the reason I like to have this is because sometimes you need a knife to really get some leverage and a bigger knife like this will help you get through things like squash or a big piece of fruit like a watermelon. So it's nice to have. Um, I tend to go to this knife. This is my favorite knife. It's about a six inch knife and I use it every single day. It is easy for everyday um, jobs in the kitchen. I love it. Uh, this is a bread knife. You can see it has a serrated edge. And um, it's great for bread, of course, getting through that crust, but it's also good for getting through things with tough skins like a watermelon or even um, delicate things like tomatoes to get through that delicate skin and not squish the tomato. So I really like it for that. And then this cute little guy right here is just a three inch paring knife. And I love this for easy things like slicing strawberries, um, 
you know, just little tasks in the kitchen. The last thing is it's nice to have a dedicated pair of kitchen shears just for your kitchen. So you're not running around your house going to your craft drawer or something like that. Just keep a pair of nice kitchen shears that are nice and sharp for all your tasks in the kitchen. Okay, um, I think that my s'mores are starting to, they're starting to soften. I'm gonna add just a couple more minutes to them. All right, um, so now let's talk about cutting boards. So um, it's important to have a couple cutting boards. Um, the reason, I'm sorry, I'm kind of coming out of frame here. Um, the reason is because you want one that you can cook uh, or ch uh, cut up raw meat on that you can sanitize. So I really like this one. It's like a plastic kind of hard surface and it has a channel, but this is what I cut raw meat on and I can sanitize this. I also like it because it has a grip on the bottom so it doesn't slide all over on my counter. So I love this. I also think it's nice to have a wooden cutting board. Um, a lot of wooden cutting boards will come with like a channel and this is great if you're slicing cooked meat and any juices or anything run, um, run out, they won't run onto your counter. Um, I also use a wooden cutting board for uh, fruits and vegetables, and things like that. Okay, uh, let's talk about some utensils. Oh, I think my s'mores are almost done. And I grab my pot holder, because it will be hot. And this is just perfect, right? So then all we need to do is put our top graham crackers on top, and you will have 12 oven s'mores in hardly any time at all for your guests. Perfect idea. All right, let's go back to appliance or to utensils. Um, I'm just gonna go through these to be perfectly honest. I usually have a lot more utensils in here and it's very crowded, but for the most part, I use the same ones. So a whisk is great for eggs, for any kind of batter. Um, important to have at least one. They come in many sizes though. A spatula is great for flipping your pancakes, flipping burgers, this can go out to the grill and um, very multi-purpose. Pop that off. Wooden utensils, so I love these. These are kind of like a flat edge um, wooden spatula, but I use them as my wooden spoons. And they're great for just like scraping pans. Sometimes you get um, some of those delicious brown bits called fond on the bottom of your pan when you're cooking meats. And um, I use these to scrape them up. They don't scratch my pans. Okay, two of my favorites right now. Um, I am a huge fan. I call this a spoonula. I don't know if that's an official word, but I love them. They're, this is a heat resistant rubber spatula, but it's spoonula because it has sort of a spoon-like shape. The reason I love these is because I can cook with them at high heat. You don't have to worry about them melting. The other thing is they really clean out a bowl very, very nicely um, and completely. Uh, the other thing is they're great for serving because of the spoon shape. So I have a couple of these and I really, really like them. And then tongs. I can honestly say the tongs are, they're my favorite. I flip food with them. I, um, I stir things in the pan, take them out to the grill, and then I use them for serving too, right? I can put them in my salad, um, serve my pasta, anything. So some basic utensils for you. Let's talk about gadgets. Um, my gadget drawer is also quite full, but there are some basics, right? So the first one is a can opener. A lot of recipes call for um, canned goods and you don't want to be stuck not being able to open them. So invest in a good can opener. The other one is a vegetable peeler. So you want to be able to peel your vegetables, um, so a nice sharp one is good. But I wanted to show you a quick little trick. Um, if you like spiralized vegetables, you don't have to have a spiralizer to, um, to enjoy them. You can actually just use your vegetable peeler 
peel off some some ribbons and honestly I've seen salads where you just toss bunches of ribbons of um, zucchini and carrots um, and it, it really looks so pretty especially like the rainbow colored carrots really really pretty all you do is stack them on top of one another and then just run your knife down and make these long strands and look at this you have like perfect almost kind of fettuccine noodles and you don't need to have an extra appliance in order to make this you could just saute these um, frankly even eat them raw delicious so make sure you have a peeler all right two things that I do really really well microplane I love using my microplane for zesting citrus um, I add it to dressings um, I'll add it zest to baked goods it's just like a great flavor pop right you can also grate hard cheeses these come in different size holes like for grating so you can you can find the one that's best for you but i think it's a really nice tool to have this one is one you might say okay do i really need this but i really think it's so helpful so the reason is i'm going to just tell you a story so i'm sure that all of you have gone to the grocery store before and you buy some lemons or limes and you get home and there's no juice like there's super dry that super that just bums me out um i can get the most juice when i use my citrus juicer so i know that there's some tricks where you can microwave it for a little bit um, or you can slice it in half and poke the flesh with a fork um i've just never found those to always work i always have success with my citrus juicer so i get the most juice out of it highly recommend all right let's move on to um, measuring so um, it's important to have different um, uh, utensils for measuring so these are dry measuring cups and they come you know in nesting like this and then we have some measuring spoons and then I have a couple liquid measuring cups you really want to make sure that you, you're measuring liquids in here instead of dry ingredients. Um, I've seen people where they put the flour in and then they try and shake it and look in the line and it's just not the proper way to, um, or the most accurate way to measure your dry ingredients. You really want to use, um, you really want to use uh, a dry measuring cup and you want to use what we call the spoon and level. So you will take your flour and just lighten it and then you'll lightly spoon it in. Then with the uh, straight side of any knife, you can just level it off. And this is just the most accurate way to measure your flour. All right. If you're going to pick up one of these liquid measuring cups, I would recommend a two cup because um, it's just, it's great for pouring things as well. And sometimes a one cup I find to be a little bit small. How about mixing bowls? Okay, so mixing bowls. It's important to have nice different sizes of mixing bowls. These are my favorites. Um, I love the colors. They're just these melanin bowls. Um, they're very lightweight. They're very easy to clean. Uh, I don't have to worry about breaking them, and um, they, they really work for me from an everyday standpoint, so I really enjoy these. Now, I do have a set of glass nesting bowls, and I use them here and there, but I would say these are my go-tos. Um, really, really like these. The other thing um, that I'm loving right now is I picked these up recently. They are these collapsible colanders. I just they're so great. They come in different sizes. This one I usually use for pasta. Um, and they just, they flatten and store away super easily. I use this one usually for small fruits, you know, berries and, and the like. Okay. It's also great, you know, to have a salad spinner, just as we're on the topic of colanders and washing our vegetables and fruits. Um, to have a salad spinner. These also come in different sizes. Um, I've seen them small or large. Just really nice to be able to wash your lettuce very, very well um, and not have any of that grittiness 
or dirt on it. All right, the last thing that I want to show you is just something that, you know, this is not necessarily a must, but I do think it's kind of nice to have, especially as you start to get more adventurous in the kitchen. Um, this is my spice grinder. It's really just a, a inexpensive coffee grinder though. I only use it for spices and mostly I would say I use it for grinding pepper. Um, I like to buy my peppercorns whole and then I can control the grind size. Uh, this is where I keep my ground pepper and kosher salt. Um, and I just keep this close to my stove back there so that I can just simply pinch and season my food as I, as I cook. And the spice grinder is just, you know, it's an easy way for me to, to control the grind of the, um, the peppercorns. I've also done other whole spices like coriander, um, star anise, things like that. So that's something that I do use, um, use quite often. So these are some of the big tips that I have. I know that it probably seemed like a lot of things, but really I think you will be shocked as to how much you can crank out of your kitchen with just some of these, these basic items. Um, so that's all I have right now. I think we can go to some questions if we want. So let me just um, check here and see. Um, what questions we have. Bear with me. Okay. Um, so, so sorry for the delay. We have a question. Um, gosh, I'm so sorry. This is taking a long time. Um, yeah, so um, what do you do when a cast iron starts to rust? I mean, I really try and keep my cast iron skillet um, away from things like soap and things like that. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just sprinkle salt um, over my cast iron skillet after I cook and then I just sort of zhuzh it around. Sometimes people use potato, I've heard, um, but you just want to keep it away from soap. And then I'll put it on my stove and I will um, actually heat it up um, to dry it out right away. Okay, sheet pans. You can get your sheet pans um, on Amazon. Uh, there's lots of different brands, but honestly, sheet pans can be, gosh, at any kitchen supply store or home store, you can find lots of different sheet pans. Let's see. So are wood cutting boards less sanitary than plastic? So, you know, the thing with wood cutting boards is they are more porous, right? So anything that you don't want to be hanging out um, on your cutting boards for more than, you know, if you want to be able to disinfect, you don't want to use a very porous surface. So I would recommend using, you know, um, a plastic cutting board for that reason. So yes, um, I would say wood cutting boards are less sanitary if you put something that's raw on it. Um, so just be cautious of that. Um, All right, some of my top kitchen essentials. I would have to say um, my cast iron skillet, for sure. I would say a pair of tongs, absolutely. Let's see, I would say my knife. The knife that, you're gonna, that you can use as much as possible. Um, those are my top three. I would say probably a sheet pan and yeah, I think that those are probably my top, top ideas. Let's see here. 
<laughs> so what is a Dutch oven? Is it similar to a crock pot? So there's um, Dutch ovens are a heavier, usually um, cast iron. Um, there are some enamel cast iron that you can buy these days. I actually, I do have one right here that you can see. Um, this is um, an enamel cast iron and they're great because they can go kind of oven to table um, and they're different than a crock pot because you can do the same type of cooking which is braising um, but these go in the oven versus a crock pot is just you know on your um, on your counter uh, but they're doing the exact same thing uh, the crock pot is just something that you can leave the house um, I probably wouldn't leave my um, Dutch oven in my in my oven if I wasn't home so all right you know what I hope that you learned something I hope we had fun today thank you so much for tuning in um, tune in tomorrow we're gonna be going live with one of our uh, favorite recipe bloggers and I'm looking forward to making a really fun recipe that I think all of you will be able to whip up for the Memorial Day weekend so until next time, let's keep cooking together. Thanks so much, bye.